grave I'm walking to If he walked out of the grave I'm walking to If he walked out of the grave I'm walking to Yeah. Oh, good. 
this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Yeah, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of Everybody, Skit Guys here. My name's Tommy, and my name's Eddie. How's it going, everybody? Hey, uh, yeah, this is Eddie. Uh, we just wanted to uh, tell you it's back, back to school. School time, everybody. Back to school time. Is everybody ready? I'm back to school. Yep, yep. I got my new backpack for back to school, and you've got Lame. A, an old. Uh, <laughs> no. an old what is that? What I got is a uh, hipster fanny pack right here. Right here. This is what all the cool kids are going to be doing. Taking their taking their stuff on their hip to school. Buddy, that's a lunchbox. No, it's not. Yeah. I got my, got my pencils in here. My lunch money's right here. I haven't got a place for my hipster spoon. Nope. That, Boom. That's a spoon because that's a, lunch, that's a lunchbox. Oh, nay, nay, nay. Look. Oh, someone calling me? Hello? Bam, it's gone. Boom. Shutting my fanny pack hipster lunch pail. So, welcome back to school. Welcome guys. back to school, folks. It's going to be awesome. Completely awesome. Yeah. Hey, if you have one of those, don't wear that. You're going to Wear it. You're going to get beat up. Cool kids. Not cool. All day long. Not cool at all. Hashtag all day long. He's going to get beat up. Hashtag all day long. We're praying you don't have a fanny pack, lunchbox, hipster lunchbox thing. If you do, I'd love for you to wear it next Sunday and, and share it with us. Yes, yeah, so just come with that. But a lot of schools are going back. 
this week. And what I want to do is I want to pray for our students and for our teachers. So before we dismiss the kids and let them go on up, I want you, if you're a teacher, if you're a student, if you work in a school system, would you please stand because we want to pray for you. As they're... Remain standing, guys, I know. Um, and as their church family, let's not just be about praying for our kids and our teachers today, but let's be praying for them all year long. But join me this morning as we pray for these folks. Father, Lord, it, it is time for our kids and our teachers and workers to go back to school. And today, Lord, we pray for our children. We ask, Lord, that you watch their every step. Lord, I ask that you would be a, a light for their path. Protect our children, Father. Keep them safe. Guard their hearts. Lord, through every heartbreak and trial and triumph, Lord, remind them that you are with them. Lord, I ask that they would choose their friends wisely. Lord, may they trust you more than anything else. May they be strong and courageous. And Lord, may they have thankful hearts. And through every day, Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that they would remember the privilege of having an education. May they be an example, Lord, of your great love in this world. And, Lord, I pray that they would feel your presence each and every day. And, Father, Lord, we pray for our teachers and our, and our school workers. Lord, we ask that you grant them wisdom, your wisdom, as they teach our children. Prepare their hearts, Lord, even now to love on our kids this year. Lord, and when they feel like they're unseen, remind them that not one moment goes unnoticed by you. Lord, remind them that they're shaping our future. Bless them, Lord. May they see how their faithfulness will forever impact generations to come. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. Okay, and the kiddos can go on up to Children's Church now. And if you are interested in the fair volunteering after church, meet right up there. All right, everybody else, let's stand up at this time. Wave it to someone across the arena this morning. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me. Then a little light from heaven filled my soul. He bathed my heart in love and wrote my name in love. Just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our struggle. Hear our faintest cry, can't put by and die. Hear a little prayer will turn in. Just a little talk with Jesus makes me right. I may have doubts and fears, but my eyes will fill with tears. Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every prayer. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me right. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our trouble. Here I pray in his pride. Jesus, make 
the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light Darkness tries to hide and Trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice but How great stop and uh, Lord we don't tell you enough we don't tell you clear enough we don't tell you loud enough we don't tell you often enough how great you are but Lord you're a great God unbelievable unmatchable undefinable Lord that's who you are nobody knows us better than you know us and nobody loves us better than you love us God if there were other gods to choose from we would still yet choose you they're the great I am you're the beginning and the end 
You're our master. You're our creator. You're our savior. And the list goes on and on. So, Lord, on behalf of we, this people, Lord, I just want to stand before you and let you know from our hearts to yours, we believe you're the greatest. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo. Amen. Back to school carnival for our youth, 5 o'clock to 6.30. It's going to be neat to be here. You don't want to miss it. 7th grade through 12th grade, you come. I promise you, you'll want to stay longer than the youth leaders will want to keep you. It'll be that good. And uh, I was with you all last year, and one of the greatest blessings of the year was, was being honored to be in your presence when you as a youth, not as your youth leaders so much, but you as, as youth we're praying before the Lord, praying about entering back into the school, praying about being the missionaries that God is sending you to be into that mission field. And so I'm just uh, proud of our youth. And uh, guys, you want to be here tonight, 5 o'clock to 6.30 right here. I mean, everything from Dunkin' Boots to snow cones to I don't know what else they got, but they got stuff. And uh, most of all, you'll get a lot of Jesus. In case you hadn't noticed, it looks like uh, we're at the Lord's table today. That's because we are. And let, let me share a few things about you. Just put yourself at ease if you're our guest. This is the Lord's table. It's not the cowboy church table. It's not the Baptist or the Catholic table. It's not the Lutheran table. It's the Lord's table. And if, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, you belong to him and he belongs to you. And, and today he just wants you to come and commune with him. Now, as we approach that table, many times people will be here and they'll think, well, Lord, I, I just don't feel like that. I'm clean enough to come before the holy table of the Lord. And can I tell you that he's the God that makes us clean. He can do for you what you can't do for him. So in the name of Christ, by the covering of Christ, you come to the table and, and commune with him. It's something that only you can do. Uh, this part of the communion is something you need to draw near. Uh, at Gravel Hill, our other location that meets at 8 o'clock each Sunday, uh, we had communion there. Now, you've got to understand it's in an arena, and even when we clean it up, it's still filthy, dirty. It just is. And so I had to find our little table there that, uh, uh, that we served the communion on, and I found it. And uh, you get baptized every time it rains there. The roof leaks all over, I'm just telling you. And, and, and this table had been laid right there where this one main leak is, and, and it was filthy. I mean, clean didn't even look possible, so I took it out, and I washed it two or three times, and, and I scrubbed it, and I put all the magical stuff in there and the little containers underneath the sink, and I, I couldn't get it clean. I thought, gosh, God, this, I mean, this just looks too bad to do communion on. And then I found a brand-new white tablecloth, never been used and I placed that tablecloth over that filthy table. Amen. What man couldn't do, the tablecloth did. Amen. What man can't do to be clean enough to be here, the covering of the Savior did. Amen. Amen. So I'm telling you, you come. God knows exactly how you are. He knows exactly all that you are and all that you aren't. And his invitation is to come and to dine with him at the table today. And so that's, that's going to be my invitation. I always try to preach pretty much a similar message out of the same passage. We do this basically every three months. We try to do a, a communion time. The Bible says as often as you do it, and it doesn't say exactly how often that is. That's just how often that we do it. But in it, let me draw, if I can, from the book of 1 Corinthians, this wonderful passage about coming to the communion table and what the communion table is to be about in the life of us as believers. And I say we receive it and we apply it and we experience, we go home and say, wow, I shut everything out. I shut everybody out. And I got myself in communion with the Father today at his table. So let me read if I might. Paul was writing and he said this, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. Uh, and it's just a great reminder that what he received, now he delivers. And, and so it is with us. We're, we're a pass it on kind of a faith. Uh, the fact that you came to faith, somebody had to pin these words that the Holy Spirit led men of old to pin these words. Somebody had to pin them. Somebody had to preserve them. Somebody had to present them. 
They had to share it with us. Somebody had to tell of their life story of how they once were without Christ, but by the gracious wooing of the Holy Spirit, they were drawn to realize that God loved them, loved them so much that Jesus came, became a man, loved them so much that Jesus, the perfect Savior, died a sinner's death for our sin and for yours, and he was laid in the grave, and the grave couldn't hold him, but he rose again three days later. Somebody had to tell you that story. It's a pass it on kind of a faith, and so I say that to say this. First of all, give Give thanks to whomever or to whoever the whoms are in your life that passed it on to you. Is that a good thing, way to start? They say, Lord, I want to thank you for this one and that one that passed it on to me. But not only that, but then let it be a reminder and be a refreshment, a reviving of that call upon our life that, oh, Lord, but now help me to pass it on to somebody else. Those that I know, those that I meet, those that I don't, I don't even know whom they are, but just cross my path for whatever reason. Let me be one like Paul that what we have received, so we give away once again. So what he received, he also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when Jesus had given thanks, he broke it and he said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also, he took this cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Uh, this is a time not only of coming together, but this is a time that while we're together that we will remember. It's a memorial service. I, I, I did one this week, and it was a time of remembering the loved one that had passed away. There had been a, a death of somebody special, and it was a time to remember them. There has been a death of somebody special among us. Amen. Christ Jesus, our Lord. And it's a time for us personally and a time for us corporately to, to remember the fact that, first of all, that his body was broken for us. This bread is the body that was broken for you and it's so important to know that that without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord whenever he went to the cross his body was broken when the Lord went to the cross his body was beaten and it stripes and by his stripes that we are healed it was on that cross by his grace that he bought our health amen he bought our health and the fact that he purchased all the health we will ever need. And some of you are saying, well, Jim, if, we bought, if he bought that health, then how come I'm not healthy? How come there's parts of me that don't work? How come there's disease among us? How come there's sickness among us? How come there's brokenness among us, among our body? He bought our health, and one day we're going to receive it in its fullness. But the fact that you are alive and got a body that's working in any part whatsoever, it's because of your grace. You didn't deserve that. I'm telling you, it's by his grace he bore those stripes. By his grace that body was broken that we might have any health whatsoever. But even though we have only received it as part, it's been purchased in whole. And there's coming a day whenever Christ is going to raise up those that are dead in their graves. He's going to come back and rapture his church. Those that are in the graves will come up and we that are left here. And as he draws us up to be with him, we'll receive an absolutely brand new 30-year-old, 100. 45 pound body for me anyway we're getting a new one amen it will be heaven ready it will be eternal it will have no aches it will have no pains and I believe that there's much healing and much health to be found here absolutely without a doubt but I'm telling you we will not receive it all even when Jesus gave the sight back to the blind man he still died even though when Jesus healed those lepers they still had sickness and the cells were dying are you understanding but there's a coming a day when they're going to get a brand new heaven fit body. Woo! Amen. So whenever we come and we pick up that bread, I want you to be thankful for all the health that you have. Remember what it cost him for us to have health. But also, I want to remember that God still yet says to cry out. God still yet tells us if we're sick that call the elders and let us pray over you. If we're sick that we're to come and bring our needs unto the Lord to ask and to seek and to knock. Bring it to the Lord. He's still in the healing business. Yes. Amen. He's still in the healing business. So it is we remember what the body was about and the brokenness of that body. The bread represents that. But also we remember what the cup is about. For the cup by, by the shedding of his blood. By the shedding of his blood, we, we enter into a brand new covenant. It's a covenant of grace. Amen. You see, the, the body that was beaten, the body that was broken, took care of our physical man. The blood that was shed took care of our spiritual man. Without the shedding of blood, there is no 
omission of sin. But there was the shedding of the blood. And by his blood, all of our sin has been covered, all of our sin past, all of our sin present, and all of our sin future. It has been covered by his death and by his resurrection. After that death, we've been granted victory. We've got victory and freedom over our sin. We've got victory and freedom over ourselves. We've got victory and freedom over this world. We've got victory and freedom over Satan. It's already all ours. Amen? Say, well, Jim, well, how come I don't have all the victory in all those areas? It's already been purchased. But like our body, we will not experience it in full till we get there. And the reason I know that is the fact that Jesus said that we are to die daily, to take up our cross and follow him. If we already had it all, in experience, even though it's all been purchased, even if we've had it all in experience, we need, wouldn't need to quit dying every day. We wouldn't quit need to say, Lord, I come before you. I confess my sins on a daily basis. We wouldn't need to be doing that, but we do. But nonetheless, we have been set free in Christ Jesus. By faith, we learn to walk in that freedom, but we won't have the full experience because of our behalf because of the world's power and presence, because of Satan's powers and presence, we won't have full experience of it till we get there. Amen. That makes sense? But we're going there, amen? This is just a manifestation of a, of a, for a short time. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm drawing a blank in the Scripture, but nonetheless, see, when I get there, I'll be able to remember. My brain will totally work. I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to it. Mm, for these light and momentary afflictions. Got it. Thank you, Lord. The mind of Christ is still at work. These light and momentary afflictions. Whew. We're here for a little while, guys. We're eternal beings in Christ Jesus by faith in him. So whenever we take of that cup, realize that all of our sin is forgiven. We've been granted the power to overcome in every area the sin that approaches us and all that comes against us. But we will not totally experience that victory because of our lack, not because of his, till we get there. But someday we're going to be there and be crowned with righteousness. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember that. But now is it a time of remembering, but also it's a time of proclaiming. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. First of all, there's a, there's a part of proclamation that's going to happen here today. Whenever you take of the cup and whenever you take of the bread, each of these elements are more or less painting a picture of what God has done for us. Just as I just said, the, the bread represents the fact that his body is broken. The cup represents that his blood was shed. And so it is, it tells that picture. So just by taking of it, participating in this, we're doing a preaching ceremony by our actions from there. But it, it not only tells us like baptism, tells us about the fact that he came and lived and died and was buried and rose again. So these elements tell that story about him, but these elements as we partake of them also tell a story about us. Whenever I take of that cup and take of that bread, it's my way of proclaiming, yes, I'm a believer. It's my way of proclaiming, I believe in the body that was broken. I believe in the blood that was shed and what it has done for me. It's our way to tell that story. So if the preacher's not any good today, it's your fault too. None of so it's not only a time of proclamation, but it's also a time of anticipation. So we proclaim his death until he comes. Gosh, we don't speak often enough. We don't remind ourselves often enough. We don't think about it often enough. We don't sing it about it often enough. He's coming again. Woo. Amen. He's coming again. When the eastern sky is going to break open one day, he's coming again. He's going to come and rapture up his church. He's coming again. He's going to come and give dead bodies, brand new bodies. He's coming again. Woo. He's coming again. Woo. In anticipation that he is coming Again, woo, until he comes, hallelujah. Woo, don't ever forget it. Amen. Whenever life gets tough, he's coming again. Amen. Whenever days seem long, he's coming again. Whenever you're weak, he's coming again. Whenever you don't know what to do, he's coming again. Amen. Woo, as good as it is, I'm telling you, it's good right now. If there were no heaven, I would still want Jesus. If there was no eternal life, I would still want life with him and the life that I have. But there is eternal life. Amen. And I'm telling you, he's coming again. Yes. Don't forget it. Amen. Amen. 
It's a time of examination. It's a time of, of remembering. It's a time of, of proclaiming, but it's also a time of examination. Let me read on in verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may, be not, but we may not be condemned with the world. Amen. My friend, it's a time of coming to the table, coming for a time of examination. And as we examine ourselves before the Lord... We want to come in a worthy manner. Now, say, well, Jim, well, what, what, what does that mean? And I've shared this before at a church, and, and they had, whenever they did communion, they would sit every other row with people, and then there would be a row between, and then, then another row of people. And, and the deacons of that church, they would come, and they would decide who was worthy of the supper and who was not worthy of the supper. We're not talking about that kind of worthiness. If we would judge ourselves, if we would judge ourselves with He the All Holy, if we would judge ourselves, He who has no sinful thought and no sinful word and no sinful deed, if we would judge ourselves, we say, Lord, even in the best of my days, I'm not worthy. Amen. Even the best of days, my, my righteousness is still as filthy rags. Coming to the table is not coming and saying, Lord, I've got it all together. I confessed all my sins. You don't even know all your sins. I'm just telling you. I'm not telling you not to confess them. I'm telling you yes to confess them. I'm telling you to examine them. But I'm telling you, you don't even know all that you are. We, until we know all of Christ, how can we know all of what we're lacking in him? He's so much more than we know. And I'm telling you, we don't even begin to stack up to his holiness. Coming to the table in a worthy manner said, Lord, I'm not worthy in myself to be here. Does that make sense? I'm not worthy. But Lord, in the midst of your holiness, there's some things that I know that aren't pleasing to you, O oh Lord. And I want to come and I want to own them before you. It's a great time to examine yourself to the one that invites you to the table. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. So it is that, that we can come to him just as we are, but be honest in who you are before him. And own your sinfulness. You see, the first requirement to be saved, you've got to be a sinner. Amen. And we hadn't got that all fixed on this side of heaven. Own our sins. Confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let it be a time of examination right before the Lord. But in closing, let it be a time of humiliation. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, Wait for one another. And this is, a, this is probably stretching what this scripture is saying, but I still think it's an appropriate application. I, I like the way that we often do it, where we receive the bread like you're going to do in a few minutes, and we wait until everybody receives the bread, and then we take it together. Then we'll receive the cup, and we'll wait until everybody receives the cup, and, and then we'll eat it, to take of it together. And it's a great reminder for me, maybe a reminder for you that, in this walk as a group of believers that we're all in different places along the path. Some of us are ahead of others in some areas. Others are ahead of us in some areas. The job that we've got to do, the calling that we've got to do, the life that we need to live is no matter where they are behind us, we'll wait on them. We'll blaze a trail for them, yes. We'll call out to them, yes, but we'll be patiently waiting on them. Just as our Lord is patient unto us, he waits for us to know him in faith. He waits for us to grow with him in faith. He waits on us. So we need to be that kind of a people that learn to wait on others and help them through their journey. I've been at the rodeo in Sykeston all, all week long. And can I, tell you that, can I tell you that most rodeos aren't like that, first of all? They're not like that. They're not a party rodeo. Uh, just it's... Uh, uh, the drunkenness, 
the vulgarity, the lack of clothes. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just sad. I'm telling you, it's sad. And that's not a very good reflection of the sport called rodeo in that particular one. So as I left last night, one of my grandsons was with me, and, and you've got to go through this drunken mess. I mean, you've got to go through there and pray you don't get spilt upon and all that kind of junk. So I just left him on his own back there and hoped he found his way. No. <laughs> no. I wanted to cover his eyes and plug his ears up for what I wanted to do. But I waited for him. I'm farther along, okay? But I waited for him. That's us in a life of believers. We're all at different spots. But wherever we are, let us have enough humility to wait for one another, to encourage one another, to instruct one another, to leave a path for one another. Let it be a reminder of such as that. So with all that being said, I think it's time that we go to the table. Man, if you come forward and help us to serve, come if you would. So I've told you before, this is not any special group of men, just a group of men. They're special in many ways, but not like some title that puts them here and uh, it's just a group of men that we said, would you be a servant today? And so they said, yes, they'll come and, and they'll serve. And uh, it's also kind of like home. Sometimes this goes like it's planned. Some days not. One day we did a worship service, Lord's Supper service, and invited the men to come down. That's what I said, the men will come down. Well, we had a guest, never been here before. I've never seen him since. And uh, he came down. I mean, and so I look across there. I said, I know everybody here. It's supposed to be 20 of you. But 21, I don't have a clue who he is. And so, and so nonetheless, uh, it kind of went crazy on him. And uh, I hated that for him. But uh, what I'm trying to tell you this is the fact that you might have to get up and carry a tray to somebody else. That something might fall or get spilt. And if it does, we'll pick it up and we'll, we'll make it do. It's, it's like home. We're a family. And I thank you for these men that are willing to serve. So with that being said, let's take of the bread and pass it out.
Before they ate, the Lord gave thanks. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you now this morning, and Lord, as we come, we think of so much, but Lord, with this bread in our hand, Father, we cannot help but think of our Savior, you, Christ Jesus, who allowed yourself to become flesh, become skin and bones, become a man. And you walked in a body with its limitations like we have walked as well. But, oh, Jesus, we want to thank you right now that you allowed the stripes to be born on your body, that you allowed your body to be broken. And, oh, Lord, that you did it for us, that as you took our stripes, as you took our disease, as you took our brokenness, oh, Lord, you took it off of us. So I want to thank you so much for the health that you have given us. I want to thank you for the parts of health we've already received and the parts of health that is yet to come. And, Lord, I even want to pray because of the health that's been purchased that you'd be gracious to extend healing and health to those that are present today that are going through some physical ailments, Lord, and some physical diseases. Lord, we ask, Lord, you said to ask and to seek and to knock. So we're asking, Lord, for healing to happen here in this service this morning. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you will deliver that word to whomever it needs to go to. And by faith, help them to receive the healing that you want to give them today. And Father, I thank you for all you've done and all that you are yet to do. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Shall we eat?
before we take of the cup, may I pray? Heavenly Father, we come, and Lord, we are so thankful, Lord. If, if we ever needed an evidence that you love us, surely the cup that reminding us of the blood is that evidence, oh Lord. Thank you, Christ, for coming and dying for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ushering in a brand new covenant that this blood represents, that covenant of grace. Lord, we are so thankful that you fulfilled the law in Christ Jesus, that you've applied that fulfillment unto us, all because you're a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of love. We thank you for that, Lord. We're just amazed at all the sins that we have confessed as we've examined ourselves that they're covered in the blood, not held against us, never to be used against us, no condemnation in you. And the list goes on. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.